Hello, my name is Carrie Edwards and this is my project on disorders of the human immune system for Natural Sciences 101. In order to understand the disorders of the human immune system, one must first understand how a typical functioning immune system works. When a foreign microorganism invades the body, the body first sends feeding cells such as neutrophils and macrophages to react with any means possible to remove the pathogen. Some methods of doing this are causing inflammation, signaling the threat to the other cells, and causing cells to migrate to the affected area. Another group of immune system cells, lymphocytes, further the process by determining whether the invader is self or non-self. If the microorganism is determined to be non-self, the lymphocytes are responsible for controlling the infection and also marking in order to protect against a potential return attack in the future. The human body has a quality system in place to determine that the lymphocytes are functioning properly. If not, they are usually destroyed. When problems arise with the quality check, it causes the malfunctioning lymphocytes to remain in the body, leading to a compromised immune system. This flaw is where disorders of the immune system stem from. There are three types of immune system disorders, autoimmunity, hypersensitivity, and immunodeficiencies. The first type of immune system disorder that we will discuss is autoimmunity. Autoimmune disorders are characterized by the immune system's inability to differentiate between potentially dangerous cells and healthy ones. Thus, the immune system attacks essential parts of the body as if they are dangerous. Autoimmune disorders are either inherited or acquired, and scientists have recently found many factors that can influence the development of acquired autoimmune disorders, such as gender, environment, hormone levels, vaccinations, and exposure to certain toxic metals and chemicals. Autoimmune disorders remain a mystery to medicine. Treatment is focused on relieving symptoms, but there is no cure. Autoimmune disorders can affect any part of the body at any time with varying degrees of severity, often with destruction of tissue, changes in organs, and abnormal growths. The symptoms vary depending upon the disease, but can include painful joints, fever, inflammation, nausea, and fatigue. There are over 80 types of autoimmune diseases. This includes lupus, psoriasis, narcolepsy, multiple sclerosis, and Graves' disease. The second type of immune system disorder is hypersensitivity. With hypersensitivity disorders, the immune system reacts to antigens in a negative or exaggerated manner, causing damage to the body. Hypersensitivity disorders fit into four categories, type 1, type 2, type 3, and type 4. Type 1 hypersensitivity is essentially an allergic reaction, which occurs after the body is exposed or re-exposed to an allergen or antigen through direct contact, ingestion, injection, or an inhalation. Reactions occur within a few minutes and the severity can range from mild irritation to death, depending upon the individual and what type of antigen is involved. Here is an example of what a typical skin rash caused by a hypersensitivity reaction may look like. The types of hypersensitivity disorders include asthma, eczema, hay fever, and food allergies. Here is a basic table of the different methods that can trigger allergic reactions, an antigen or allergen reacting with the body via skin contact, injection, ingestion, and inhalation. The second classification of hypersensitivity disorders is type 2 or cytotoxic hypersensitivity. Type 2 hypersensitivity disorders occur when antibodies attach themselves to tissues or cells and destroy them. Disorders associated with type 2 hypersensitivity include Graves' disease, autoimmune hemolytic anemia, and good pasture syndrome. The third type of hypersensitivity disorder is type 3 or immune complex hypersensitivity. It is caused by antibodies reacting with antigens, which are then deposited in different areas of the body and can damage tissues. Reactions can take up to 3 to 10 hours after the initial antigen reaction. Reactions can create a general sense of sickness or can individually affect organs such as the skin, joint, or lung. The different type 3 disorders vary widely, but rheumatoid arthritis, an inflammatory disorder that primarily affects the joints, is the most common. The fourth type of hypersensitivity disorder is type 4 delayed type hypersensitivity. It is a reaction that occurs when the immune system sends T cells to counteract the pathogens that attack the body. The reaction may take several days to appear. The type 4 disorders include multiple sclerosis, type 1 diabetes, Crohn's disease, and peripheral neuropathies. 
The third and final category of immune system disorders is immunodeficiency disorders. They occur when some aspect of the immune system does not work properly, causing the immune system to be weakened. With this disorder, the body is more susceptible to infections and acquiring other diseases. There are two types of immunodeficiencies, primary and secondary. Primary immunodeficiencies are generally inherited, while secondary are acquired and can be caused by other factors such as previous disease, infections, and certain viruses. Some immunodeficiency diseases include DeGeorge syndrome, selective IgA deficiency, Wiscott-Aldrich syndrome, and common variable immunodeficiency. This concludes my presentation on disorders of the human immune system. I hope you enjoyed it.